just your grace, your conviction, your comfort, your peace, your joy. It pleased you that in Christ, your Son, our Savior, dwells all this fullness that we need. Uh, and your word says Christ in you is the hope of glory. So we receive that. We bring it close to us and embrace it even in this moment of prayer. We need you more. More than yesterday. Hallelujah. So we yield to you, Holy Spirit. Speak to us through these next few moments. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God a hand of praise for us.
is for everyone that has embraced Christ as personal Savior. If you're a child of God by faith in Christ and his work on Calvary, he said, you're going to have some trouble. He said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He's going to give you grace to go through it. See if I'm going to, I'm going to move on through my message here to go ahead and cap this off so that every believer, I want to see the hand up because I want to know who I'm talking to. If you're a child of God, not ashamed to declare it, and you've been through something, all right, if you're raising your hand and you're a child of God and you haven't been through anything, then just hang in there. Trouble's coming. You've heard Pastor Simon say this over the years. If you've been around me, he said, in this life, you're going to have trouble. That's the scripture. And I like to say, either you're headed for trouble. I'm saying that for the benefit of those who don't know what trouble is. If you're a child of God, you're headed for trouble. Some of you sitting right in here right now, you're in trouble. You're going through some right now. Some of you ought to be able to wave your hand and say, I just got out of some, and I'm so thankful. Amen. Because God's grace is sufficient. Proverbs 15, 23. I'm going to move speedily through this message because I want to encourage you to be joyful. And God's going to give you joy in due season. Whenever trouble comes, it's an opportunity to rejoice. I pray that you will make this a discipline of yours. Is when you're dealing with some stress, some challenge, some difficulty, give God praise. Let me make this clear. I'm repeating myself. If you're a child of God, if Christ is your Savior, this is a benefit you have. Amen. This is a resource you have. Child of God, if you're... No, let me say it differently. Not if, like it may not happen to you. When you're going through Develop the discipline of giving God thanks and rejoicing in Him. What you're going to find out is strength comes. The psalmist says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Amen. If you leave with nothing else in this today, you saw Kelsey. Go into baptism and get heard. I need to rejoice no matter what I'm going through. Amen. Proverbs 15, 23. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. Is that 15, 23? That's New Living Translation. You can keep it up there. And everyone enjoys a fitting reply. It's wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. King James says, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good is it? Ecclesiastes 3.1. You've heard this more than uh, a few times. Ecclesiastes 3.1. It says, to everything... There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen. In our lives, we're going to have seasons. Amen. Amen. Seasons of trouble and seasons of peace. Amen. Seasons of difficulty and seasons of ease. Seasons are part of our life. Let me say it a different way. So season may sound a little bit uh, up. How about storms? Amen. How many know storms are natural? 
Scripture says it rains on the just and the unjust. Amen. Storms are natural. But God gives his people grace to go through storms in life. James 1, 2, I'm going to walk through this and be done. Dear brothers and sisters, amen, I, I like to pause when I'm reading through scripture to appreciate the, the tone, the atmosphere, the, the, the direction of where the speaker is going. James, I like to remind myself that he's a half-brother of Jesus. And he spent his childhood and early life not believing that Jesus was who he said he was. Until after his death, burial, and resurrection. And now he's one of the apostles. <laughs> oh, glory. And James says, dear brothers and sisters. That means it applies to the body of Christ, the family of God. Those that are saved by grace through the work and power of the Holy Spirit and being sustained and kept by the Holy Spirit. He said, dear brothers and sisters, he said, when? Didn't say it. <coughs> Amen. I, I pray you hear this with your spirit, your soul, and your mind. Don't, don't expect the life, your life to be easy. Don't expect it to be a cakewalk. You've heard this worldly phrase, and I think it applies to no pain, no gain. It's not, it says, when you, or when troubles come your way, when troubles of any kind come your way. When? That's an emphatic word. And I say trials and storms will in, be encountered by the people of God. It's a given. It comes with the call out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. John 16, 33. So Corey, stay with me. I'm going to have you jumping through a few scriptures, but John 16, 33. You know this one. It says, I have told you this also that, that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. I quoted this just a few moments ago. It was King James Version. It says, These things have I spoken of you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation or trouble. But be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. So when trouble comes, Scripture gives you an encouragement to rejoice or draw from what God has given you. Let me say this another way. If you don't have tests, you won't have a testimony. Uh, amen. Amen. Kelsey was in the pool talking about why she wanted to do this baptism thing because she's been through some stuff. Yes. And I think she appreciated this, and I want to encourage you, I'm repeating myself, if you're going through or you've been through something because you have identified yourself with Christ, then it comes with the territory. The scripture says don't think it's strange. Don't think it's strange when you have trouble come your way. That's Paul's writing to the church at Corinth. Don't think it's strange. You're going to have some difficulty because it comes with the territory. Yes. Jesus says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. No problem, no reputation, no test, no testimony. That's why you're a child of God. You ought to be able to tell somebody how God brought you out of something. Amen. Amen. You want people to listen to how much Jesus means to you? Tell them about what he brought you out of. How he got you through something. Tell them, tell them how you were in the midst of a 
your trouble or trial or challenge, and the Lord kept you. Amen. Amen. They'll pay attention. You may not be able to tell them, or they may not pay attention to you when you talk about how he died uh, and was hung on Calvary and he was buried in the tomb and he came out the third day and he was resurrected and he went back up. They, they may hear that, but they may not have faith in that. But they'll pay attention when you say, I was caught up. <laughs> I was in this or that. I, I, I made some decisions in life that now I regret. But the Lord brought me out. And, and, and what you're talking to about is stuff that they are probably in right now. Because God is using your test as a testimony. So if you have no problems, you have no testimonies. Storms are natural in this world. But remember this. I want to give you some level of comfort. They come and they go. Jesus said in this world you're going to have storms. But remember, they come and they go. Let me give you something to, to, to carry with you. Just want you to know, Job went through horrendous storms. David had his Goliath. Esther and Mordecai had their Haman. Amen. They, they went through storms and challenges. And Paul had his storms. He was shipwrecked and imprisoned. Peter had his storms. He denied Jesus three times. Here's something to gather from those that I've identified. There are many of them throughout Scripture. Those that are significant stories that we teach in Sunday school and we preach about. These are people that went through difficulties because of their faith and trust in God. Joseph. You remember him. And his brothers threw him in a pit. Amen. Because he was bragging about his coat of many colors. And, and Joseph went through a whole lot of challenges. But in prison. But God had a purpose for it. Our storms, our trials, our tests will become testimonies. But when you look at all of the people we've studied about in scripture, and I want you to apply to your life, is that God allowed the test. And I'll tell you why God allowed it, because he knew you could handle it. Let me say that again, you may not be, God allowed the test because he knew you could handle it. Scripture says he won't put any more on you than you can bear. I, I'm having a little struggle here in that one, Sister Andrea, too. Because I've been through some stuff, where I'm just, I, when I think about it, I wonder why the Lord let it get so bad. I believe he allowed it because he was the source of the strength. Amen. And he trusted you, he trusted me to trust him. Amen. Amen. He said, my grace is sufficient. That's what he told Paul. Paul said, Lord, remove this thorn in my flesh. It bothers me. It keeps me bothered all the time. And the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. He told him, said, uh, <laughs> your strength is manifested in your weakness. And I think Paul said, okay, I got it. He said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So now I'm going to rejoice in my weakness because now I know that when I am weak, I'm strong in the Lord. God wants us all to get to a place that I'm not depending on my wits. I'm not 
depending on my physical strength. You remember Samson, don't you? Until he got deceived and had his hair cut. He doesn't want us depending on our physical abilities and our mental abilities. He wants us to depend on faith. He allowed Job to be stripped of everything. His children, his money, his land, even his health. But Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. If you go back early in the, in the, in the, in the book of Job, you'll, you'll see that the Lord had allowed Satan to come and challenge him about Job. And Satan asked him to let me challenge him. The Lord said, go ahead. Just don't kill him. That's because God trusted Job. If I can't get you to hear anything else, because you're a child of God, because the Lord revealed himself to you, amen, you didn't get smart one day and come to the Lord. What you did was you responded to his call. Amen. He, he called, he made me come to my senses. It wasn't like I was smart enough to get saved. You heard me say this time and time again. It wasn't until the Lord revealed himself to me. And once you do that, then God is on your side. So when, when trouble comes, 1 Corinthians 10, 12, I'm almost done. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. This is a valuable, uh, let, let, let me, before I go there, let me do this. Let me walk through James chapter 1 again. Because it says, when troubles of any kind come your way, this is verse 2. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. When trouble comes, change it says, consider it an opportunity for great joy. This goes contrary to our natural instinct. When trouble comes, God says, I want you to develop a habit of saying, praise the Lord. Rejoicing when trouble comes. Doesn't make natural sense, does it? Amen. But God is watching our behavior when trouble comes. If I re resort to my own skills, God's going to let me handle it with my own skills until I get stripped of myself and then I realize my help only comes from God. So I need to, amen. Brother Larry got to develop the discipline of calling on God from the outset. So when trouble comes, Give God thanks and praise. Yes. Amen. You, you can say something like this. Lord, I know you got this. Because yes. this, this looks like a mess. <laughs> and you, you have to learn to give God the glory. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Because joy is a fruit of your spirit implanted and empowered by Holy Ghost. We must release God's joy in us for his glory. It's unending and boundless in power and supply. We have to learn how to activate joy. So we have to rejoice. Amen. That word, you, all, you know, I always make an uh, emphasis on words that have re in front of them. That means you have to do it again and again and again. Nehemiah. 810, and Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a fast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. That, 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 that's a, that's a uh, promise and provision that your strength comes from joy. Joy in the Lord is your strength. Being cheerful that God is never leaving you. 
I know it's difficult to rejoice when things are not going well. But God wants you to get a discipline of saying, Lord, this is a mess, but I know you're here. So I'm going to rejoice in you. And let God show up and show out when you rejoice in him. God knows you, child of God. He knows you. 1 Corinthians 10, 12, I started there. If you think you are standing strong, this is 1 Corinthians 10, 12. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. If you're walking around in your own strength and own smarts and own, own uh, experience, everything that you have learned in life, you got this. But the scriptures say, if you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. Verse 13, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. So the trials you have, everybody goes through them. But notice this, child of God. He allows stuff because he can keep you. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out. Uh, let me read that. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. That's a promise that God is making to you. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. This is, telling, this is a strong scripture that you kind of embrace because it says, I need to be tuned in to God all the time. Amen. How many of you know you can get in your flesh quickly? Amen. I think there's a benefit to rejoicing in the Lord because you bring him right in the middle of it. Praise the Lord. When things are going awry, going crazy, or you're being tempted or tested or tried, you need to rejoice in the Lord. And you'll bring him. He will show you a way out so that you can endure. God knows you, child of God. He knows how much you can stand. That's right. He's allowing what he knows you can handle. Let me repeat that. He knows how much you can stand. He knows how much you can stand. How many of you ever told somebody, that's all I can stand because I can't stand anymore? <laughs> Parents, you've told me too, that's all I can stand. Because yes. I can't stand anymore. <laughs> the Lord knows how much you can stand. That's why right, he's allowed what he knows you can handle, even grace to escape if necessary. You've heard me say that faith isn't faith until it's tried. God's going to try your faith, and he wants you to know that you have faith. Now, let me say this so that just in case anybody leaves here thinking that you can do anything and God's going to bring you out of it, no, this is a promise to the child of God. If you're not a child of God, then you're kind of on your own. Jesus paid the price for you to become a child of God through faith in his birth, death, and resurrection as payment for your sin. That taps you into the provisions and the promises and the protection of God by his joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength, child of God. Verse 3, and I'm finished. Uh, this is James chapter 1, verse 3. And then I'm going to do 4. James chapter 1, verse 3. Thank you. For you know that when your faith is tested, I pray that each one of you will come to appreciate that this is something God expects you to know. When your faith is tested, God's going to test your faith. Amen. God's going to see if you're trusting him. Let me say it from another scripture. This is, you don't need to go to it, but you know this. Hebrews chapter 10, I think it's verse 1. Without faith. Without faith. Without faith. It's impossible to please God. Amen. God will let your faith be tested so you'll know whether you have faith or not. So, you know that when your faith is tested, and he will test your faith.
faith, your endurance, your ability to stay in the fight. Endurance means patience, being consistent all the time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God wants, He wants soldiers He can trust. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He, he, he can trust Job. He allowed Job to go through it. Something when we read the book of Job, it's stuff that we can't even imagine. But notice that at the beginning, God said, Have you tried my servant Job? Your endurance has a chance to grow. Your ability to stay in the fight, to be consistently a man or a woman of faith, someone who's going to be consistent in forgiving, someone who's going to be consistent in studying, consistent in worship and praying and rejoicing. God wants you to be consistent. If you're consistent, God knows what you're going to do with amen in every situation. Amen. I know that. So I'm going to allow him to go through stuff that I know he's going to be able to stand in. Because he's testing it. And your endurance and consistency and patience had time to grow. Amen. How I many you know God's got to keep you growing? Y'all said, oh yeah? That means another test coming. So you can grow. Amen. Verse 4, we're done. James said, so let it grow. Let it grow. When you say let it grow, James is saying let it grow, that means let the test come. Let the trials come. For when your endurance is fully developed, hmm, there's a place God is trying to get every one of us. This is a place that I want to be, sister Vanessa. I want to be whole. Yes. I want to be complete. Lacking nothing. Amen. Amen. I want to be able to see stuff when it's not right coming my way. That's because I got the heart of God, the mind of God, the mind of Christ, and I can see trouble coming before it comes. I'm not blind. I can see. But it, amen. But I'm going to get tested until I get full grown. So let it grow. And I think I can appreciate now that when you're going through the tests, learn how to rejoice. Because you're still growing. Amen. God allowed a test that he believed you can go through, that you can handle. Amen. Amen. Child of God, woman of God, man of God, if you're going through a test, that's because God believes you can handle it. Yes. His grace is sufficient. Yes. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. My joy is your strength. That's why he believes you. He said, I've given you everything in Christ that pertains to life and godliness. That's why we need to have the mind of Christ so that we hear like him. And we respond like him. And we understand like him. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed. Listen, we're in a developmental stage. And so, and this is my encouragement as a pastor, don't be looking for someone who's less than you. We can get caught up in worldly ways of encountering one another. You, you look down on somebody because they ain't quite as strong as you. Don't measure yourself against somebody else. The only measuring stick should be Christ. And when you look at him, fully grown, fully God, fully holy, Feel some growing for me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's why you encountered all joy. Because God's working on you. Yeah. Yeah. Says you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Amen. Amen. Child of God, my brother and sister, we're on the journey. 
We want to be like Jesus. We don't have time to waste. Side issues to get caught up in. We're doing like Paul. Paul said, I press. He said, I, 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 I press. He says, forgetting those things are behind. Amen. And Paul went through a whole lot of stuff. And he counted it all joy. He said, but I press towards the high call of God that's in Christ Jesus. So you don't have time to look at how raggedy somebody else's life is. I say that I'm not being disparaging. I'm just saying sometimes we get caught up in comparing ourselves with somebody else. At least I ain't. When you do that, the enemy gets a foothold. He gets access into our life. We set our affections on things above and not on things of this earth. There's a place we're trying to go. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect. That word is typically mature. You will be mature and complete, needing nothing. Stand to your feet. We did well, unless that clock stopped. Murder. Amen. Rejoicing is seasonal. Rejoicing is seasonal. And thank you, Sikori, for putting it up. Cheerfulness, calm, delight, joy depends on the quality of my relationship with Christ. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Not in your money, your job, or your good life, or the favor that you've seen in life. Now rejoice in the Lord. And he'll keep these other things in the proper perspective. Amen. Because joy is strength for living. Amen. Amen. Thank you for reminding me on that, Sikori. Joy is seasonal. That's why I believe you have to rejoice. Amen. Because if you're going through a difficult season, you need to be intentional in rejoicing. I mean, you know, it's easy to rejoice when things are going well. Okay. Amen. Your football team's winning. Your basketball team's winning. Your, 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 your children are, are, amen, getting good. All the good things in life you can be joyful about. It's easy to rejoice about those things and give God thanks for all of that. But your spiritual strength is developed when you can rejoice when they're not going so well. Then you're drawing from the well that the Lord has provided. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Every head bow. Every head bow. Father, I, I thank you for the privilege of speaking yet another Sunday, another gathering of the people of God, and you've afforded us the privilege even with the technical challenges we've had today uh, to encourage the hearts of the people and to remind us that your joy is our strength. And we must develop and we ask for your grace to help us to grow in discipline, to rejoice always in all things, in all circumstances. This is your will for us. It's for us to have a heart like yours, to know that you're our strength, that you're a very present help in our time of trouble.
and that the trying of our faith means that you allow us to be tested so that we can become mature and to be credible witnesses to your divine power to transform life. Amen. We pray. Yeah, we pray that when we encounter souls that need what only you can provide, that joy floods our souls. We have compassion on them, but let them see and experience our joy. Even when we tell of the testimony of having been brought out of darkness into your marvelous life. Joy is attractive. Joy captures the attention of souls that are weary and need rest. Holy Spirit, help us to walk in joy and all the fruit. benefits and character traits of Christ in us. Help us so that we can be a powerful witness in this hour and season that we are. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We pray, oh God, that you'll touch every soul that's, that's standing here today that needs healing in their spirits, where there's heaviness in their lives, let the spirit of joy come in and be stirred afresh. That's for every believer. Healing for their minds. You came to give healing not only to our spirit, giving us a new spirit and giving us a new mind also to our bodies. We speak that healing presence for the whole man today. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we speak that for everyone that has been looking in and will look in and come across our video. We pray, oh God, that your peace, your comfort, and your joy will flood their lives as only you can. Holy Spirit, we yield to your work. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Sister Kelsey, I want to present you with a certificate. Holy Communion is a one of the ordinances that the Lord set in motion for His church. We celebrated baptism today. That's one of the ordinances within the body of Christ. We celebrated together. Now we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. set this in motion for our benefit. And I appreciate why he set it in motion.
because we have a tendency to forget. Amen. He stood with his disciples and he said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Amen. And so the remembrance is for what he did as God the man came to sacrifice his human life in our place. He said, this bread is my body. It was broken. It was wounded. He took stripes upon it for our benefit. By his wounds, we are healed. He said, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. So let's eat the bread representing the body of Christ. The cup represents his blood. The payment that was made for our sin. So when you drink the cup, you identify with the work that he accomplished by paying sin's price. So we want to thank you, Lord, for having paid for our sin. So we drink the cup together in unity, being one with you and one with one another. We drink it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we want to thank you for those that stayed with us for this service. We give God thanks and praise for you. Just a reminder, if you're going through trouble, that's because God allowed it. Amen. And his grace is sufficient to get you through it. Amen. One of the encouragements we want to give you through our message today is develop a discipline of rejoicing in the midst of your trial. When you do, you bring God right in the midst of it. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you the next time.